Okay, uh, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. In this video, what we're going to do uh, is prove a theorem that's going to be very, very useful uh, in uh, proving another theorem. And the theorem we're building up to, basically, is that the metric space CAB, uh, with this supremum metric on, uh, is a complete metric space. However, before we can prove that, there is a... Uh, there's a prerequisite piece of knowledge, basically, uh, a, a theorem that we are going to use uh, in uh, that proof that that metric space is complete, uh, which is uh, worthy of its own video, basically. Uh, so the theorem that we're basically going to prove is that if you have a sequence, S, uh, which is a sequence of continuous functions, so you have F1x, uh, F2x, etc., and the sequence of functions converges uniformly to some limit function over here. And all of these functions, so fi, they are all elements of CAB. And this convergence is uniform here. Then basically, this function has to be continuous, i.e. Lx also has to be an element of CAB, basically. It can't be discontinuous. Uh, you can't have a sequence of continuous functions which converges uniformly uh, to a discontinuous function. This limit function will always be a continuous function. So here's a picture. Right, so we have this um, AB here. Uh, which is our interval in which these functions are going to be defined. And we have some limit function here, which is Lx. And basically, these functions are converging uniformly to that Lx function. And basically, if all of these functions, f1x, f2x, so I might draw a few. Here is, let's say, f1x, f1x, f2x, etc. are also continuous functions, and they converge uniformly, then that implies that this function Lx is also uh, a continuous function. Okay, so we're going to prove this, uh, this result in uh, this video. Okay, so firstly, let's, uh, let's uh, rev revise what it means uh, for a function Lx to be continuous. So what does it mean uh, for this function to be continuous? It means uh, what we want to show is that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that uh, if y is an n... Oh, right, okay. Uh, sorry, I've missed a step out. It means that for all x is an element of AB. So basically, you choose any little x which is within this interval AB. The function Lx being continuous on the entire um, entire interval AB means that you pick any little x is an element of this interval AB, and uh, then pick give me any epsilon. There will exist a delta uh, greater than zero such that if y is an element of the open ball around the point x of size delta, and since we're working in the real line, uh, that open ball is just the interval from x minus delta to x plus delta. So if you take this delta interval around the point x, uh, then uh, the image of any point in this delta interval, so f of y, it implies that f of y will be an element of, uh, well, the epsilon ball around the point f of x of size epsilon. And of course, again, this is the real line, so that's the epsilon ball around the point f of x. So let me draw a picture to explain what that means. f of x plus epsilon. Right, uh, so another picture then. So, if we have some function here on the interval a, b, and it's continuous everywhere on that interval, which is what we're trying to prove uh, lx is going to be, then that means you pick any x which is in this interval a, b, then that ha is mapped on to some value that say, oh dear, what have I done here? Um, that the, When I put f there, that I should have put l, really. Uh, we're talking about the function l, so I've just put it for an arbitrary function f. So we'll work for l, though, so I'll replace all these f's with l's. Okay, so this is the function l of x. And basically, this specific point, little x, uh, is going to be mapped onto some value l of x. Okay, so that's the value that this function maps this specific point x onto. Right, so you pick any x as an element of this interval a, b. Then basically, if I give you an epsilon, uh, which is greater than zero, uh, and ask you to construct an epsilon interval, uh, basically, around this l x, so you construct this epsilon interval, so that interval there around L of x is the epsilon interval. So that's Lx minus epsilon. 
to nx plus epsilon, uh, nx plus epsilon here, okay, then this definition says that whatever epsilon interval you take, there will exist a delta interval around this point x. So I can find you a uh, delta interval. So I'll take this down here. So this thing down here is my delta interval around the x. So there, whatever epsilon interval you give me, I can find some delta uh, such that this delta interval, which is x minus delta to x plus delta, that entire interval, any point within that interval, oh, and I, I do apologize, these should be open intervals, not closed intervals. Cross that out and put a very big cross for it. Right, okay, uh, so these, all of these should be open intervals, not closed intervals. I do apologize, open balls, uh, so they're open intervals. So you can create this open, in, uh, no, that the interval AB is a closed interval, but the delta interval is an open interval, the epsilon interval is an open interval. I do apologize for that as well. So, you take any little y, um, little y, which is an element of this delta interval, so take any point in this delta interval, it's going to be mapped into uh, the, the value that that point y will be mapped onto by this function L is going to be mapped into uh, the epsilon interval around L of x. So basically, any point in this orange interval is going to go into this pink interval. So basically, what the statement of continuity says is that for all x you take in this interval a, b, and for all epsilon i give you, you can construct some delta interval around the point x such that the entire delta interval is mapped within, to, within uh, the epsilon interval around the point uh, Lx in the codomain. Okay, so that's what uh, continuity on the uh, interval AB means. Uh, so uh, we all want to prove uh, that if uh, the sequence of functions uh, is all continuous functions. So all of these functions in this sequence of functions are continuous functions. So this holds, basically, for all of these functions uh, in this sequence. What we also know is that this sequence of functions converges uniformly to L of x. Then we want to prove that L of x satisfies this condition of being continuous as well. Sorry about that wet spot there. Okay, right. Um, so, uh, let's start with uh, reviewing what the uniform convergence tells us. Okay, so, if this sequence of functions, so let's rewrite the sequence of functions out. This sequence of functions, f1 of x, f2 of x, f3 of x, etc. If that sequence of functions converges uniformly to the function L of x, what does that mean? That means that if I draw out the function L of x, okay? So here is the function L of x here, okay, uh, then I can get whatever epsilon you give me, I can draw an epsilon ribbon around that function L of x, like that so. So I draw this epsilon ribbon around this function L of x, uh, and basically, so for all epsilon greater than zero, there, there must exist some point, some big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, there must exist a point in this sequence of functions, some f big N of x, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, so if you take any function in the tail end of this sequence, so this tail end down here, then that function is going to be completely contained within the ribbon. Uh, so it will be something like this, maybe. Okay, so any of the functions in that tail end will be con uh, contained within the ribbon. You can find some big N such that, that holds, basically, is what the statement of uh, uniform convergence means. So officially, uh, in words, sorry, not in words, in symbols, what that means is that for all x is an element of the AB, so for all points in the interval AB, the modulus of uh, so the modulus of the function f little n evaluated at x minus the function uh, the limit function evaluated at x is going to be less than epsilon. So the distance between the point the value which um, which the function f little n maps x onto and the value which the function l maps uh, little x onto is going to be less than epsilon basically and that that means basically that at every point uh, it's going to be within the ribbon basically it's never going to go outside of that ribbon okay uh, right so that's what uniform convergence tells us R and we also know that every single one of these functions is continuous uh, so let's try uh, to prove from that uh, that this function Lx is continuous. Okay, so remember what we're trying to do to prove that it's continuous. What we need to 
do is show that if I give you, uh, well, firstly, let's, if I pick a point x, which is an element of the uh, interval, so firstly, let's say let k be an element of the interval. I'm getting fed up of using x because I often use x to denote just, you know, any number in a, b. So I'm going to let, uh, instead of using x again, I'm going to use k. So let k be an arbitrary choice of a point in this interval a, b. So basically, you've just picked an arbitrary one, and basically, if we keep it general and prove that for an arbitrary one, uh, it's going to be continuous at that point, then we've proven that it's continuous everywhere, basically. So let k be an arbitrary point in the interval a, b. We're also going to say, let epsilon be some arbitrary number greater than zero. Our aim is now to show that... Um, that we can construct a delta interval around k, around the point k, uh, such that that entire delta interval is mapped into the epsilon interval around the point L of k. Okay, so that's our aim. Right, uh, so let's draw the picture out again. So we have some interval, a, b here, and some limit function here, L, x, and we picked some arbitrary point k, which is in the interval a, b. We've now said take an arbitrary epsilon um, that's greater than zero, construct the epsilon interval around this point L of k, and I want you to be to construct me a delta interval around k, so I want a delta interval around k, such that that delta interval is completely mapped into uh, this epsilon interval around L of k. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.